Hello my Spartan brothers and sisters, this is Kadima with a new God of War Ragnarok build video. This time we are using the build that I decided to nickname the Destroyer. The reason for this name is quite simple. You will be destroying everything that comes in your way, either if it's a boss or multiple bosses or multiple enemies, doesn't really make a difference. With this build you'll be prepared for whatever comes your way because you'll be doing quite um, high amounts of damage. So, there are two versions of this build. I mean, by two versions, I mean that there is one version that I use to fight the Berserker King, and after defeating the Berserker King, I make just a couple of changes that will then make the build even stronger to fight the Gna, the Valkyrie Queen. But let's start with the version one of the build, if you want to call it that way. So we are using, as you can probably tell already, the Berserker chest piece that gives you an all-around boost in all of your stats and has the perk Solus Warrior, which increases the uh, damage of Kratos' melee attacks after you're using a relic. This lasts for about 16 seconds. Do keep in mind that damage received is also increased. So when you pop that relic up, just make sure that you hit as hard as possible without getting hit. Um, for the wrist and the waist, we are using Vider's uh, pieces, the reason being the finish, finishing might um, boost, which says combo finishers do increase damage and the damage will be increased by 20%. The second reason for the choice for this um, two particular pieces of, of gear are the massive increases to strength. So as if you look at the top left corner you will see that we've got 543 uh, strength which is perfect for this build we got 241 runic which also helps with the damage of our runic attacks and the elemental damage that we will be dishing out by elemental damage you will see shortly what i mean you probably can tell already if you watch some of my previous videos and we have 137 luck uh, which also comes in handy for some of the gear we are using for the amulet, we are using the attuned um, runic gem, which increases the damage of runic attacks when the permafrost emulation and maelstrom skills are fully charged, which can increase the damage output. Uh, the emblem of the nine realms, the reason being we are using realm shifts with our relic. So during those realm shifts, we want increased melee damage, and you will see such a tremendous amount of uh, damage uh, increase when we pop the relic that you will understand that is the moment that we'll be detonating bosses along the way for the third one we are using the seal of runic storm you probably seen me using this before if you watch any of my previous videos this one me uh, gives you the ability that by using uh, runic attacks of three different weapons in quick succession grants a buff of increased stag resistance and creates a storm of bifrost for those who are not familiar with what this means exactly. So if I do a runic attack, I switch weapon, I do another runic attack with the second weapon, and then I swap to the third weapon and I do a runic attack. There you go. You get the Storm of Bifrost. It lasts for about 13, 14 seconds, and this keeps doing constant damage to our enemies. Also, the damage that you will be doing with this Bifrost Storm or any other form of storm will be elemental damage. As you can confirm um, if you check the stats help, the runic stat will increase the power of runic attacks and also the elemental status damage. So the higher your runic attack, the higher the Bifrost uh, storm damage will uh, do. But continuing with the build with the remaining amulets, we are using the set of Niflheims uh, using Justice, Force and Virtue for the stats that we plan to tweak with this build. This enchantment stat gives increased status melee damage when he is above 75% elf based on defense. We only have 313 defense. It's not a massive boost, but because we will be permanently staying above 75% health, this will always help. For the last enchantment set, we are using one of my favorites, Move Muspelheim's uh, enchantment set, using the Force Endurance and Protection. This set gives increased Kratos' melee 
the melee damage when the permafrost emulation or maelstrom skills are fully charged based on his runic with 241 runic stat this is actually a quite good buff for the um, side of freya the accessories we are using are the sonic attunement which uh, increases um Sigil arrows deal increase the status damage, um, which shouldn't be that. It should read Sonic. Oh, yes, yeah, Sigil um, arrows deal increase status damage. There's, there's something wrong there. It should say Sonic. Is it bugged? Huh. I could swear it said Sonic before. Anyway, uh, melee attacks against uh, an enemy afflicted with Sonic deal significant increased stun. Um, we also are using the Noct proficiency, which every third runic arrow fires an additional three arrows. Um, for the weapons, we are using the Leviathan X with the Furious Mole for the basic strength increase, uh, which is what we want in this build. For the light and every runic attacks, it's entirely up to you. I use my favorites, the Njord's Tempest and Ivaldi's Anvil. For the Blades of Chaos, we are using Deadly Obsidian Handles, which again increases basic strength by 63. This one has a low luck chance to grant a Rage Burst on any Blade skill, which can be useful if you're fighting multiple enemies, but if you're fighting a boss, you'll not benefit much from this part of the uh, attachment. Light and heavy runic attacks, once again, it's entirely up to you. As for the spear, we are using the warrior's uh, Echo Sorauter because it gives both, both strength and runic. And it also will uh, give you the Sonic Piercer, which increases uh, the damage and the uh, Maelstrom skill charge with the spear. Uh, when you attack a sonic afflicted enemy as for the shield this is when the build changes um if i'm fighting the berserker king i'm using this setup if i'm fighting multiple enemies i'm using this setup but when i was fighting uh, gna the valkyrie queen i realized i was not pairing i was not using the shield at all so therefore i was just wasting stats with this one and i made a little change but the Dauntless Shield is the best shield to parry. It also gives you a 26 cooldown on top of the 130 defense. And we are using the shield attachment round of disruption. You have seen me use this before, I'm pretty sure. This increases your runic and your luck uh, on top of the defense as per usual and gives you a low luck chance to create an elemental storm when interrupting double blue ring attacks by double tapping L1 or pairing. Again, these elemental storm... Uh, will be doing more damage the higher your runic with 241 runic the damage is actually quite significant and it's a constant source of damage that you'll be having by doing nothing you just have to parry or interrupt a blue ring attack and you will have another force of a source of damage going on for you now when i was fighting the valkyrie queen just so you are aware of the difference i changed this to the shatter starred shield and i changed the round um, of disruption for the round uh, of pu uh, purification. The reason for this change is because if I am not using the shield to um, do uh, damage or parry the Valkyrie Queen, which was absolutely unnecessary, and you will understand why in a minute, I would rather have more strength and more runic, and this is the best way to go. We have an increase to 577 strength, and our runic just goes up ever so slightly to 244 which is not massive, but we will not be using these uh, perks unless you, if you are afflicted with Bifrost and you double tap L1, for example, against the Berserker King, if you want to use these two instead of the parrying shield. Um, although this shield still parries, it's just not as good in my opinion. Um, this is still an option for the Berserker King. Uh, uh, it's entirely up to you. Um, you can always uh, use the round of disruption with this shield which will still give you 543 strength but it will give you an even higher runic of 277 it's entirely up to you as i said um, i rather use 
um, the sh the run of disruption and the dauntless shield um, when I'm fighting multiple enemies or not uh, such big bosses. For the Spartan Rage, I'm using Wrath for obvious reasons. Can it can save your ass in a tight situation. And for the Relic, we are using the Hilt of Offwood because of the Realm Shift uh, that you can get uh, from this. Now, uh, how to use this build against multiple enemies? I'm not so focused on using the Storm of Bifrost from the third Runic attack. Um, but I sometimes do. Um, but here's an example of how much damage this is, is to be expected with this build. So it gives you quite an idea of how much basic damage you'll be getting. You are starting to annoy me, brother. There you go. Just a quick check on something, because I should have had at least one by now. No, I haven't. That's a bit strange. But no problem. There you go, Storm of Frost, finally. Ah, another storm now, that's good. This one is down. Now, I want you to take notice on how much damage we will get once I activate the permafrost and the relic. One, two, three. Oh, we teleported. Perfect. That is That was the worst of all time, honestly. He teleported just at the right time when I was about to use the relic. <laughs> Never happened to me before. Anyway, I think it's pretty clear the amount of damage that you can get uh, can get when flying, uh, fighting normal enemies or elite enemies. Um, the damage output is quite good. You got a lot of options with your parries and your frosts. I didn't focus on using the three runic attacks um, for the bifrost uh, storm you get from uh, the the amulet uh, piece. Uh, but I think you know how to use it by now. You've seen me doing it before. In any case, let me now show you uh, how it went against uh, the Berserker King and Gna. Right, let's summon this Berserker King. Yes, I can. Dodge. Dodge again. Close the gap. Parry. First runic attack with the spear, change to the blades, runic attack with the blade, activate Freya's summon, and then change for the axe for the last runic attack, so we get the storm of Bifrost, we activate permafrost with the axe, we activate the realm shift for the buff, and look at this much damage. So the idea here is to do the R1, 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 R2, and by doing that, you also get the bonus from the wrist and the um, waste uh, armor pieces because it increases the combo finisher's damage and that R2 is a combo finisher. We get another Storm of Bifrost from our parries, we attack a couple of times and he's already down. So it's a very quick uh, fight uh, by using this build, you get so much damage during the realm shift, it's incredible. Let's go for the Valkyrie Queen. During the Valkyrie Queen, I like to start the fight the exact same way. If you have watched my videos, I go for the heavy runic attack with the spear. I change to the blades. I do the heavy runic attack with the blades. During the last hit, I activate Freya's special, and then I do the uh, light runic attack with the axe. I activate permafrost. I activate realm shift. R1, 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 R2. Look at that much damage. 
look at uh, that massive damage she is down. Please consider subscribe if you haven't just yet, um, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. This is Kadima. Cheerio!